Aloha, namaste. This is Alexis Cox with Radha Home Yoga and I wanted to give you a quick update on this uh, eclipse that's happening tomorrow at uh, 12.30 here in California to 2.15 is the, the primary time on the eclipse. And of course we won't really be seeing it here because the moon will be beneath the horizon. Um, the total time of the eclipse is from 10.15 in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon here. So it's actually over six hours. Very, very strong, potent eclipse, even though we won't be seeing it here. Um, we have the lunar node, the south node, right near the moon, which is why it's such a long eclipse. And that means the energy on our psyche, on our mind and our emotions is gonna be very strong. The nodes can bring us to um, some seriously potent messages from source if we take that time to kind of tune in and um, meditate or do practices that are um, meditative, such as mantra or um, prayer, uh, chanting. If you have um, even a practice of asana, you could, you could do that at this time. Although um, the more you can drop into a meditative state, the better. So um, you know, if you can sit still and, and especially chant, or just drop in really deep. This is a great time for that. Um, this, this eclipse is joined the planet Mars. And if you've been watching any of my videos or um, really just kind of being present with the astronomy and the astrology, you would know that Mars is super close to the South Node and has been since um, May 3rd. The planet Mars is exalted in the sign of Capricorn and it moved into Capricorn on May 3rd and we've seen since then a lot of fire in the world right we've seen um, I, I live on the big island and I'm, I'm visiting right now California but um, we've had volcanic eruptions there there's been fires in southern Oregon and um, in Greece and um, really I'm sure there's fires everywhere <laughs> I, I, I haven't kept up with everything that's happening everywhere in the world but there's a lot going on and um, in our own personal world, we're experiencing a lot of fire, right? We're experiencing maybe potentially some discipline and some courage coming yeah. to the surface, but also, um, you know, perhaps some anger and some, um, some anger with ourselves most recently as Mars turned into retrograde cycle we start to feel a little bit frustrated because our forward motion that was really keeping us going is sort of more um, beneath the surface, more repressed and even reversing, even moving backwards. So we have that. This is my, my son Noah is bringing me rocks. He's a very diligent person and gets his frustrations out by carrying objects from one place to another. And if you're really frustrated, that might be a good idea too. Just take one thing from one side of the room. You can do two stacks, you know, of rocks and just carry them from side to side of the room. It's an ancient practice. Um, I think he was a monk in a past life. So we, um, we need to really channel our anger right now. And it's hard because of the retrograde motion. Things aren't coming out in the outward world as, as clear or as clean of a channel as they were earlier um, when Mars was in Capricorn. So we might be feeling some extra frustration beneath the surface. Um, and the energy of the, you know, the geological energy, the energy of the world is also bringing that sort of surprises popping up from underneath the surface right now. It's not quite as uh, clean and clear of a channel as it was before. Um, so this is, a, this is an intense time for all of us. And because the, the moon is full and our psyche is um, ripe for, um, for messages from this time and for influences from this time, I should say, we could be receiving influences that are really, really tuned in, or um, you know, conversely, we could be receiving some delusional messages that are not are not very tuned in. Each of us have a different rising sign, and therefore Mars is a different planetary ruler for you, and Capricorn is a different house. So it's going to be affecting you and your life a lot different depending on those factors. And if you have ever signed up for my um, for my website email list um, at alexiscoxyoga.com. I actually, the most recent free report that you got when you signed up was this eclipse access. And it was, it was when it happened last August, you know, so it was a long time ago. But so you, if you already, already on it, then you received it quite a while ago. If you, um, 
if you just sign up now then you'll receive it right away and it'll just tell you what houses are affected for you um, with the nodal axis we're currently in we've been in it again for a year almost and um, we've been really putting our energy where the north node is which is cancer we've been putting our energy on the feminine on our feelings on our emotions on what we want to nurture in our life but we perhaps have been avoiding some of our responsibilities some of the external things we have to take care of in this world some of the um, fears we might have fears around um, the time we have in this world and how, how much we have of it and how much has to get done the, the things we have to take care of um, financially and just you know externally in the world um, that's really what Capricorn's about and it's about our our capacity to humble ourselves in order to work towards those goals so whatever we've been sitting on and of course it's a different house for each of us but whatever area we've sort of been avoiding for the last year is, is coming up now and there's just no getting around it and we've already been seeing this since May and it's taking this little turnaround um, in the retrograde cycle that could be very frustrating for each of us but this full moon lunar eclipse is going to bring it out really strong whatever's frustrating us whatever's angering us because Mars is still retrograde it's still going to be an internalized um, regressive feeling and we are going to really need to care for ourselves um, really need to um, take into account that this too will pass and that um, whatever feelings and emotions we're experiencing are are not forever they're not eternal the moon moves all the time it will move tomorrow it will move the next day and we um, don't need to stay stuck in that place and that's why practices like mantra are so beautiful because they help shift the energy by saying things um, especially words that are mathematically attuned to um, to the universe like the Sanskrit words but even if you have English mantras that feel really good to you um, they, they just help clear your brain um, of the of the um, vritti, the waves that that constantly occupy us and make us distracted and confused and forlorn really so I um, and also this particular full moon Guru Purnima is in the nakshatra of Shravana which is all about listening it's to hear to listen beneath the surface to what's deeper so very spiritual nakshatra and um, strong capacity again to get those special messages to really tune in and align yourself with what is truth but also potential to um, get wayward by the delusion not a good time to you know practice with with uh, drugs or alcohol or anything like that that's gonna bring you deeper into your sadness and and depression and um, definitely a good time to uh, reach out if you if you need it to somebody that that you trust and love and know mercury is retrograde now also um, and it is a little further away it's about 10 degrees away from this um, from this Sun moon axis and and uh, eclipse axis but we will be feeling perhaps really emotional in our speech and in what we take in and receive from others and feeling um, you know a, a lot of you know miscommunications and that maybe the emails aren't working or the phone's not working or whatever you know the internet's not working whatever the problems are that come up with mercury retrograde added to the fact that it's in cancer where we're really emotional and really um, uh, bogged down in that watery feeling and we just kind of want to cry about it so um, so you know cry about it if you need to um, please it's good to get it out and um, that is about all I'm gonna say today for, for this um, for this eclipse I hope you are able to um, take care of yourself we had a partial solar eclipse a couple weeks ago and we're gonna have another one coming up that are a little bit lighter a little bit less um, intense than this one um, so this this is really the big the big one and um, I hope that you find a beautiful way to celebrate and um, engage with your inner world and that you are able to listen to the uh, messages that are a little bit deeper and beneath what might be on the surface so I hope you have a beautiful day I'll give you a shot of the ocean as we go and also oh yeah I forgot to say Guru Purnima is a holiday where we celebrate our gurus our teachers and um, if you have a teacher that you really appreciate or many teachers you really appreciate you can sort of think about them or channel their energy or if you're 
fortunate enough to be able to actually attend something that they're you know hosting or doing that's a beautiful way to spend the full moon um, and if you are a parent then your child is your guru and uh, I thought I could get a good shot of him there but I don't know if I did He teaches me about courage and discipline and um, letting go and um, patience. Yeah, patience. So you can spend some time with your child and let them remind you of what's important in this world. And if you have a sat guru, a guru who brings you really close to truth, a pure being who channels the energy of um, source just clean without any um, without anything fogging up the mirror or, or the straw, then you are very fortunate. And if you can be in their presence or take in some of their teachings or um, anything like that, that, that can be really powerful on this full moon as well. So um, blessings to all of you and aloha, namaste.